Hello everyone and welcome to Round Glass. My name is Amanda Ree. Thank you for joining me for this meditation with your pets. I'm very excited to be here with all of you. So is my dear friend here, Graham, and my other friend, Benny. Also a few other fur friends off, off set today. The intention of this series is to be guided in meditations that include your animal friends in the practice. But feel free to join without your pets as well. Meditation will always benefit us. If you or your pet are brand new to meditation, you're in the right place. If you and your fur friend are seasoned meditators, then you're also in the right place. Today's meditation will appeal to everyone. And in our, as our focus today, as our theme, it will be partnership. We'll explore simple foundational tools to build and develop a meditation practice that you can do together. I've guided thousands of people from around the world to meditate, and I've noticed that when our beloved pets are included, it can create even more excitement and more joy for the practice itself. I truly love supporting you and your pets and expanding your worlds and diving even deeper into your relationship together. So I'm joining you live from the mountains of Northern California this morning, tucked into the forest. Where are you joining from? Who are you with? Who are you with? What are your dog's names even? We'd love to hear that. You can just put it into the chat. So when I first began meditating about 20 years ago or so, I didn't include my pets in the practice actually. I was concerned that they would disturb me and distract me and already, you know, it's such a challenge with meditation. I didn't need any more of that. But this one particular day, I forgot to put my dog Maya out of the room and while I was meditating, she came in. And even though my eyes were closed, I could sense her being there, you know, and Maya's like this, kind of neurotic, constantly fidgeting type of dog. Maybe you can relate, even perhaps for yourself. I know I can. And so as Maya sat there and watched me, I just said, you know, I'm going to invite her. So I gave my leg a few pats and over came Maya. She sat down next to me, curled up in her little doggy snail position and went into a deep space of relaxation. She was quiet and still through the entire practice. I actually couldn't believe it. She'd never been like that. So as we continued meditating and I continued inviting her in, I noticed that the practice overall had a very calming effect on her. She became much more relaxed, even with things like her constant paw licking and the reactivity to the doorbell when it rang or even sudden movements. She would usually get quite disturbed by that. But now with time, I noticed that everything, her overall well-being, her overall sense of relaxation started to calm. Another beautiful benefit that I noticed from the practice with myself and with Maya was that our relationship started to change. It became more close and deepened. There was a lot more trust, companionship, even more um, affection and connection together in that way. And up until that point, Maya had always been more connected with my husband. So after seeing this pretty profound transformation occur in Maya, I realized again, just how powerful meditation can be for our animal friends too. And that's what has inspired me so deeply in my work. It's important to keep in mind that it's rather difficult actually to access the emotions and the behavioral side of our animals. You might notice that for yourselves. I often notice, you know, you can't talk it out with them necessarily. Yes, you can do training like with a dog trainer on your own time, but it's not quite the same, especially for rescue dogs and animals that have some past or some conditioning. It's very difficult to access that more subtle realm of themselves. But with meditation, you absolutely can because that energy exchange between us and our pets through this practice is so important and it's so transformative and you will start to see it as you practice. Now, it's also important to notice that not every pet will be transformed through the practice. Not every pet will even want to participate, but most in fact will find more sense of calm and ease simply by their human being in that space themselves. Today, the foundation of our practice is going to be a centering of our awareness. So I'll offer to you a few different tools to be able to do that. One of those tools will be a mantra.
a mind tool that will slowly, progressively allow you to quiet your mind over time. So before we jump into our meditation, I see that we have people and pets meditating from Las Vegas. We've got Los Angeles. Augie from Mich Michigan is with us. Four dogs and two boarders. Oh my gosh. And Northern California. Gracie's with us from uh, Vancouver, BC. And France. Oh my gosh. We've got people all over the world and your pets. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. It's so exciting to come together in this special way. So please, please feel free to ask any questions that come up throughout today's practice. You can just type them into the chat. And after we have our experience together, we'll have some time to get to those. So before we go into our meditation, I'd like to go over a few guidelines when including our pets. Now, if you've already had many experiences with them, you already know most of this, but I think it's important to remind everyone to allow our animals to approach the practice in their own time. Just like you would adapt a child to the practice, really just create the space for them and invite them in and detach from the rest. Um, with animals, it's a, a great technique is to bring in their favorite bed, like Benny, as you can see here, he's very relaxed in his lounging position. He's so familiar with this bed and or blankets, especially fuzzy ones. If you know your pet likes that kind of blanket, like I know Graham does, I can put that blanket anywhere and he's drawn to it like a little magnet. So that's a good way also to entice them in. The most enticing of all, however, is going to be your peaceful presence. It is absolutely undeniably desirable for our animals to be close to us in that way. So by you being in that space, in that cultivation of peace that you have through your practice, you will notice that they won't be able to resist you after a little while. Keep in mind, just don't let them distract you too much from the practice. If they start licking or scratching or you know, smacking their lips like they do. None of us really enjoy those sounds so much, so they can be a little distracting. But also just recognize that you can just stay in your core, stay in your centered awareness, let them do whatever they'd like, treat it as you would any other distraction around you or noise outside and just return to your practice again and again. Now, people have asked me along the way if they should leash their dogs to help, you know, keep them closer with attempts to kind of control them. But I would not advise that. Again, just let them do whatever they'd like. They'll just resist sometimes even more if we're trying to control them in that way. So just create the space and detach from the outcome. Such a good lesson in life in general. So now, my friends, let's take a few moments to get really comfortable and prepare for our practice. Consistency with your setup is one of the best keys of meditation. So what I mean by that is bringing the same blankets, you know, feeling the same senses, connecting to the various pieces of information that it's receiving. So the same smells, dimming the light in the same way. This will also be very helpful and effective for your animals because they are so sense oriented as well. Some in, in some of their senses even more so than we are, of course. So now, if you've got your animal situated and they're calm and quiet, and now maybe you have gotten yourself into that calm and quiet position as well, you can, when you're ready, slowly close your eyes. Now you may be reclining, that's okay. You don't wanna be laying all the way down flat in case, you know, for some of us it's early in the morning, so you might want to be laying down, but I would advise against that and more so put some pillows behind you to help recline you a bit so that you're not uh, confusing the association between meditation and sleep. Ideally, we're sitting up nice and tall, but relaxed, arms relaxed down onto our laps. The eyes can remain closed, or if that's not comfortable for you today, just allow your eyes to remain low. The idea here is to make sure that we're not distracted by the things that we might see during the practice. Let's begin with some deep, full breaths in and out. If it's comfortable in the beginning, at least, you can bring the breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. 
in through the nose, out through the mouth. A few more breath cycles like this, noticing that the inhales can help to ground us into our body, into the earth beneath us. The exhales can help us to release any tightness, tension, any holding, just let go. Now you can seal your lips, breathing in and out only through the nose, allowing each breath to take you deeper and deeper into this quiet space within. For a moment, you can tune in with your animal that may be by your side, maybe across the room, maybe in a different room altogether. Not being bound by any physical proximity. As you're breathing deep, just tune into them. Noticing that divine life force that breathes them is the same life force that breathes you. By bringing our attention to the true essence of all of us, it helps connect and unify every level of our being. Feel your belly expand as the lower lungs fill with breath. And slowly releasing, softening the belly. Keep paying attention to the movement of the belly in and out, as that does help us to take those deeper, calmer, health provoking breaths. Now, perhaps you'd like to bring in an audible breath. If this is not comfortable, just breathe naturally. But if it is, you can practice what is known as ujjayi breathing, the victorious breath of the yoga techniques, the pranayama, the breathing exercise that constricts very slightly, ever so slightly, the back of the throat so that you hear that gentle hissing as the breath comes in and out through the nose only. Keep your lips sealed gently. And just notice how this audible breath as you continue each cycle helps even more to center our mind on the present moment. Landing more fully here and now. Oftentimes our dogs seem to enjoy the audible breath as well, and you might notice them start to breathe deeper. Maybe you can even hear their breath. Tuning in there and noticing the same centered calmness and presence that it may bring. Continuing a few more rounds of the audible breath if you're still with it. Either way, staying grounded in each moment. 
by moment as they come. You can release now the audible breath, the ujjayi, and just breathing normally, continuing to keep the breath moving through the nose only. And now I'd like to introduce a mantra. If you'd like, you can use this mind tool or this mental anchor to help you rest the busyness of your mind. So you'll just repeat this word over and over and over again, allowing yourself to rest on it and in it. But from time to time, it's only natural that your mind will wander off to other thoughts, sensations, and feelings. When you notice that your mind has wandered off somewhere, just gently draw it back in. Draw it back into our centered awareness. Land again on the anchor of the mantra and rest there. Just know that this ebb and flow from mantra to thought is totally natural in this practice. With time, your mind will land more easily on your mantra creating even more space between each of the words, creating more peace and opportunity in your practice. The mantra that I'll offer today means partnership. It's a name that signifies a close friendship, a play fellow or a companion the word is ar yamin. Ar yamin. Perhaps you'd like to repeat it with me out loud a few times. Ar yamin. Ar yamin. Ar yamin. And now a little softer. Ar yamin. Ar yamin. And now whispering it. Ar yamin. Ar yamin. Ar yamin. Now continue the repetition silently in your mind without moving your lips or your tongue. Continue the gentle repetition. I'll let you know and draw you back in when it's time to finish that up. Ar Yamin. Ar Yamin. Continue that silent repetition, anchoring your thoughts anchoring any fluctuations of the mind to the word. Ar Yamin. Draw your mind back, 
Ar Yamin. Ar Yamin. Continue your deep, long, smooth breaths. Ar Yamin. Ar Yamin. Allow the whole body to be at ease. Are you men? Are you men? And now, after another deep breath, you can release the repetition of that mantra. Just let it go and rest easy here. Resting in the awareness Resting in the calm. Now, if it's easy for you with your eyes remaining closed and your body relatively still, if you can extend your hand over to touch one of your animal friends, please do. Only if it's really effortless and simple. Just making that contact with them while you're in this centered place and while they are too. A partnership like this is like no other. It gives us access to unique experiences, inner wisdom and healing. The purity of the unconditional love that we experience with our animals nourishes our hearts and souls. Just like partners stick together during challenging times, this partnership too is so much stronger when you're apart, when you're together than when you're apart. Many of us have noticed, especially over the last year and a half or so, that our animals have been a saving grace, true angels in our lives to help us through difficult times. Studies have shown actually 
that the blood chemistry of dogs and their humans when they're spending time together bonding changes. So interesting. We experience an increase in dopamine and oxytocin, helping us to feel better and to be uplifted, them as well. We certainly can be experiencing this when we're meditating together, when we're in coherence. Coherence is the quality of forming a united whole. It's actually the essence of partnership. Remember that this healing energy is available to us, this coherence with our animals. At any time, we're present with them, fully present and in the moment. Before we finish our practice, this is an ideal time to set an intention for yourself and your animal friend or send a thought, a prayer, a message to them, carrying that message from your heart straight to theirs. I'd like to finish our practice with a quote from the amazing teacher Eckhart Tolle in his book about animals called Guardians of Being. Continue with your eyes closed or low, your body still. Eckhart says, the dog has no self-image, good or bad, so he has no need to play roles, nor does he love himself or hate himself? He has no self. How to live free of the burden of self? What a great spiritual teaching. Rest a moment in those words, in this beautiful and powerful connection that we share with our companions thanking them for being here and being in our lives, being our best buds. And after another deep breath or two, whenever you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes. The sun has come up while our eyes were closed. <laughs> when we sit in stillness together, even if it's just a small amount of stillness or a short amount of time, we are able to experience a boost in our health, our vitality, our immune response, our sense of balance, and our access to creativity. Many of these same exact benefits are available for our animals too. So let's take a moment to reflect. What did you notice within yourself throughout this practice? What did you notice for your pets? Share with us. Sometimes you will notice that the immediate, that there's immediate benefits from the practice. And sometimes it takes more time, more duration, like it did for myself and with Maya, as I shared with you. So if you, anyone has any questions and you'd like to put it into the chat, Sarah says, my dogs recognize your voice, Amanda. Oh, that's so awesome, Sarah. Say hello to your 11 beautiful beings around you or however many you have. Shout out to Anki in Ireland who is there with her dogs, Shane and Finley. Oh, I love that. So uh, one question here that we'll uh, get into just a little bit is sometimes my fearful rescue dog is so anxious 
He doesn't want to come to me. What can I do to help him trust me more? Well, just keep doing what you're doing. If you're here right now and you've meditated with your fur friend, then that is the perfect first and many steps. By being together in this space of ease and calm and stillness, that sometimes they've never experienced such a thing, especially if they do come through rescue or maybe have had some trauma in their past. They maybe have never sat next to a human in such a calm and relaxed and easy and safe space like that. So just give them that opportunity over and over again, daily for sure, and notice that that will not only help them to calm, but it will deepen your bond and the trust that you have together. So another question was the licking and the fidgeting during meditation, what should I do? Well, as I mentioned, you just ignore it mostly. Sometimes I will lean over and just touch my dog, just send a message kind of down to them to relax and take it easy and take a deep breath. And they usually will too, and that'll soften things. All right, my friends. Well, my pack and I, along with the incredible team at Brown Glass, want to thank you for joining us today. It's been wonderful. We'll be back again next week, same time and place, and we'd love to have you keep joining us. Each week, we'll explore different themes and various teachings to benefit the lives of our companion animals and ourselves. Remember that you can meditate with Round Glass Live every single day, so you can check us out at round.glass or use the app. Until next time, everyone, we're sending you lots and lots of love. Namaste.